Hey everyone, it's December. It is the holidays. It's the perfect time to shut yourself in from the cold, enjoy the warmth of your house, turn on Netflix, cozy up with your loved ones, and watch some great films on Netflix. And recently I've come across three great films that I've watched on Netflix that I don't think enough people know about. And the first one I'm going to suggest is the first Netflix original movie, Beasts of No Nation. Beasts of No Nation is the first Netflix original movie, and no, I will not review The Ridiculous Six. It came to Netflix back in October, but I just got around to it a few days ago. It follows Agu and his part in a civil war taking place in an unspecified African country. He joins a small military group, led by the character played by Idris Elba, who is as ferocious as ever in this role, but also vulnerable at times. The movie is so immersively downtrodden that it was hard to keep it together and think critically. I'm not saying that I or anyone around me could actually relate to the brutal reality shown in this film, but if you've ever felt alone, which we all have, this film will emotionally resonate. Many beautiful moments in this movie. I would find it very difficult not to like Beasts of No Nation, as it gave me almost everything I could want from a movie. Their director, Kerry Fukunaga, showed me something holistically new, and even if just slightly, changed how I think of the film's subject matter. Also worth note is the brilliant cinematography in this film. The only issues I had was the pacing of the film, and I thought the plot was a little dry, even though the themes hit me really hard. But the fact of the matter is, I watched all the credits because I didn't want to turn it off. Beasts of No Nation is an 8 out of 10. Another movie that's on Netflix that I thought was great, that would be a great watch, is called Take Shelter. Take Shelter focuses on Curtis, a stable and down-to-earth family man who works as a construction worker in small-town Ohio. Throughout the movie, Curtis is trying to cope with the increasing fear and paranoia initiated by terrible dreams where a storm would happen, then he or someone close to him would be harmed. Curtis tries to relieve himself of what could be high anxiety and paranoia or schizophrenia, depending on how you look at it. He also wants to protect his wife, played by the amazing Jessica Chastain, and his daughter from the harm and stay as close to them as possible. I was going to do a Five Reasons video for Take Shelter, but now I'm doing this, so Five Reasons! Reason number one is that it's a mystery and a psychological thriller that uses the conventions of those genres in a way that never oversteps the importance of the story being told. Reason number two is that it deals with mental illness. It's a mature and respectful and hauntingly real study of a heightened mental illness. And it's rare that mental illness is ever done as non-flashily as mental illness is done in this film. Reason number three is its depiction of fear. Smartly, Michael Shannon's way into this character was fear rather than mental illness. He read very little on mental illness before taking the role. A while back, my favorite YouTube channel, Cinefix, talked about the pure hate depicted by Robert De Niro in Deer Hunter, and it may be the best ever seen on screen. Take Shelter isn't the best example of fear ever, but Michael Shannon exudes pure fear through most of the movie, and it's not often that you see acting that pure. Reason number four is Michael Shannon's performance. It's so harnessed and well-studied and specific. He knows just when and where to show just the right amount of vulnerability and when not to logistically as to the situation. Reason number five is that there is action in this movie. No, not an abundance of fist fights. Action. It's active and never becomes too small budget to be that way. It's important to distinguish those two types of small films. The reasons I'm giving it my rating, which is a 7.5 out of 10, by the way, is because the technical aspect isn't that good, and most beats do feel just a little bit long, but you should definitely check it out. And the last movie that I'm going to suggest to you guys is the 2013 folk music movie Inside Lewin Davis. Inside Lewin Davis is the Coen Brothers' love letter to folk music and artistry. It's probably one of their best and most underrated movies. It follows, you guessed it, Lewin Davis. It's kind of like a week in the life kind of movie. Lewin Davis is a struggling folk musician played by Oscar Isaac. He surfs couches because he doesn't have a home, and the circumstances just aren't in his favor. Inside Lewin Davis showcases the humongous soul of folk music and also the extreme anguish that can come from being an artist. I think that it would resonate strongly with anyone who has felt like a fuck-up, or has craved for appreciation. And that's an insecurity that I think is universal. I don't know about you, but I feel that way all the time. I think Inside Lewin Davis is an amazing film because it's honest and widespread in its relatability, but concentrated in its themes, which makes it a uniquely original film. 
I buy the constant turmoil that Lewin has to face because Oscar Isaac hits the perfect chord of being likable, but also letting the audience understand why he is unliked by some people. He also has that balance in the music. He's a good singer, and it's nice to listen to, but he's not the greatest, and honestly maybe not even that special when it comes to his artistry, which is a hard thing to hear over and over. This isn't the movie about the rise of a musical superstar. It's the movie about the other guy. These are big themes, but the Coen brothers still transfuse their signature wit into the film. Because of the somber tone, if you're not paying full attention, you'll miss how hilarious this movie can be. Another great thing about it is that it's very well technically put together. The cinematography is fantastic, the sound mix is nice, the design is good, and the music itself is well done. Inside Lewin Davis is a tight, unified, complete work of art and a fantastic character piece, if maybe just slightly slow. It gets an 8.5 out of 10. And that's it for my suggestions on Netflix this month. If you like this video, make sure to hit like, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more reviews like this, and as always, movie lovers, keep up the loving.